Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to plead that you pardon the quality of the video, um, that is the reason for that. And so there is a video, uh, there are some videos I want to show you here. One of them, you know, uh, Apostle Takim's re reaction to the recent retirement of the bishops in um, the Living Faith Church, Winners Chapel Bishop, Marcos Aremo and the Bishop Abio David. Now, um, it is also not lost on uh, Bishop David Oyedeko, uh, the dragons and the comments of the society, the world at large, based on the incident that had just, you know, taken place in church. And and uh, he has one or two words for the, the people and also an advice for his uh, bishop is retired. Now, part of the video, the wonderful um, counsel from Bishop David Abioye dealing with abandonment when you feel forsaken, when you feel abandoned, and when you feel um, forsaken by close and said, in that moment of seeming negativity, there are things you must take from it. It is a wonderful admonition. So i like you to sit back and enjoy the videos. God bless you. Uh, as we go into the video, just right after it. Thank you and God. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. This is our admissive policy, 1998, reviewed 2001. This is administrative policy and book, 2003. This is the mandate, 2012, and reviewed this year after 12 years. We have, by divine orchestration, operated by divine order, which has kept this ministry on our feet till tomorrow. It's wisdom to learn what is working and to find out what is making it work. Everything works here. So the bishop also, like I said, had a few words for his um, retired bishops and this time around he was speaking directly to Bishop Marcos Aremo and from there he told him how to handle the noise outside and also had a few words for the people, you know, outside who are making what he perceived as um, an adventurous move into a territory that actually does not belong to them, he advised them much to the community outside there to mind their own business and leave them to do their family thing, you know. He, even while he emphasized that the ministry, the church, is not a personal property, not a personal business venture. Listen to Bishop David Oedeko. But look at me, stay connected. The day a pipe disconnects from the mains, it will run dry. Stay connected. Stay connected. Consciously so. Genuinely so. Spiritually so. Stay connected. Don't bug your head answering questions that are unfounded. No one can quote silence. No one can quote silence. Beware of strangers that may come on your way and lay them aside. I have done that all my life and it's working. Even those who have gone to heaven, my connectivity remains intact and the grace is flowing unabated. Stay connected. Stay connected. There is no self-made man in the world. Stay connected. <laughs> Stay connected. So as to secure the flow of grace and not get disconnected from it. In the name of Jesus. And he had a word for the critics. Study to be quiet and face your business. So my advice to commentators Study to be quiet and face your business. Bishop Aremo also in um, his own speech during the valedictory service that was held for him to mark and commemorate his retirement from service in Living Faith Chapel had 
few words for the people, the brethren in the church, and uh, everyone at large. Listen to him and hear what I don't have a church, and I cannot have a church, because God has not infused me with the capacity to do so. This is my church. Even after retirement, I shall remain in the winner's family. I may be privileged to bless other churches other than winners, but there's nothing I'm going to teach them also than what I've learned a winner. I will also be privileged to document some of the the virtues and value that God has invested in me for upcoming generation. As I love, I will continue to practice liberality and charity to the poor, needy, the widowed, orphans, and the fatherless. As God will enable me. So, before I give you what uh, the video of Bishop David Abiyoye, Apostle Taki belatedly has responded to um, the whole thing and I would want to play this video the apostolic truth for you to have access to the reaction of Apostle E.S. Takia who was said on his I told you David Oyadepo is an astute businessman it took me time to recover hence sharing this late he tactically pushed his most loyal bishops out to prepare the living faith enterprise for his lineage. I used to know and love Bishop Abioye and Aremu. I see them as an epitome of loyalty. I preached about Abioye's uncommon loyalty at one point. But retiring them was very selfish of David Oyedepo. They have served faithfully. David Oyedepo, if he was a pastor, would have made them leaders for life, the way he made himself. Then he would have the new constitution of winners implemented after the death of three of them. Since 1996, I have followed events in living faith. It's sad that he did this. The bishops who left Living Faith Church sometimes back will be laughing at Abioye and Aremu's loyalty now. Besides, Oyadepo's action has put loyalty in a dark room. Loyalty will now become an impossible faith position to take in ministry from henceforth. Every church needs men like Abioye and Aremu to grow and prosper. They were like Aaron and Hur to Oyadepo. This thing will backfire. Let all of us leaders learn from David Oyadepo's error. Loyal people, should not be treated that way. Politics should not run our churches. Let's learn to reward loyal people who have served meritoriously and in such magnitude like Abioye and Aremu with the same privileges we give to ourselves as leaders. God is watching and will judge us. The Bible says our judgment as church leaders will be stricter. And with that, Apostle said his word of truth and reason. Finally, here is the video of uh, Bishop David Abioye. I'd like you to listen to him and put out your comments in the comment section. Let's know what you think about the whole actors in this video, from the bishop to the bishops and apostles attacking. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you, Shalom. It brings me joy to come your way again at this moment. And I want to thank God for the privilege is given to me to be able to communicate these lessons of life to everyone in this audience at this moment. Today, I want to share with you on the necessity of separation. The human system always love support. Every time you turn either to your right, to your left, whatever your field may be in career or as a professional, as pastor, you always love people around you. But there are occasions when you are left alone, even by acquaintances, close people to you in an unusual manner and sometimes under indescribable circumstances. Now, rather than reacting to people, take a shift. It may be God wants to separate you, to prepare you, for your next phase in life. Now, picking this lesson, we hear the story of the ego. That's the way egos are left alone in hibernation. As a matter of fact, every ego, as they grow up, learn to be separated. That has to be done individually because other birds may fly together, but most eagles fly alone. So do not be carried away or offended whenever you feel abandoned. Rather than reacting, you should respond to the moment. No one wants to be left alone, but it's a necessary experience. Don't be scared when you are left alone. It will always turn out for your good. 
take examples as follows. Number one is Jacob. Jacob the eagle was left alone. In Genesis chapter 32 from verses 24 to 29, he was left alone. And from that experience, he had a generational encounter. Time of separation may be painful, but it will always lead to immeasurable and sometimes generational gain. Time of abandonment is time for maximum concentration on God for your next levels. As Jacob was separated, he became concentrated. It became a desperate moment for him. Separation time is desperate time. It is time of separation that prepares you for elevation. In the journey of life, there is no group preparation for an outstanding future. So when you are left alone, it's a time to prepare you for your future. Another example is Joseph. Joseph was another ego that was left alone to prepare him for the throne he dreamt of. You see, your dream seed must abide in the dark soil before it springs forth. If you think of planting your seeds, seeds are planted individually. There is no group planting of seeds. If you do that, there'll be no moment to fellowship with the soil and come out outstandingly. That's what happened to Joseph. He had a big dream and you can believe it. His brethren, who you think should help him, they separated him from themselves to the point of selling him out and concluding and celebrating his death and burial. But he came out eventually to be outstanding and the helper of his brethren who separated themselves from him. Moses is another ego. He was abandoned as a fugitive at the backside of the mountain. You see, time of separation is a, is a switch to a new dimension of experience of glory. Again, that's why I said when you feel separated, especially under circumstances that are beyond your uh, understanding, get ready, something is about knocking at your door. He was at the backside of the mountain. When suddenly he encountered God, he saw a bush burning and there, he had the voice of God as he gave him assignment for his next phase in life. David, another example. He was abandoned. As a matter of fact, he was being pursued by Saul day and night. He was left alone in caves to survive attacks of Saul. But David, from his experience, wrote in Psalm 27 verse 10, when your father and your mother forsakes you, then the Lord will take you up. It appears as if God does not take you up until people abandon you. Well, we move forward and see Jesus, the master ego. He was left and led alone to slaughter as a sheep. Yesterday, a lot of people were crying, I mean, were shouting, Hosanna, our Savior has come. They were shouting his praise. And just today, they began to say, crucify him, crucify him. That's the way of humans. When you are there, you are celebrated. When you are no more there, you feel abandoned. But Jesus, at the end of the day, had to go through that process for him to rise up to the enthronement that God has in store for him. Paul, another ego, was left alone. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, he said, I was left alone. But now Paul is seated in the heavenly places and his name is ringing on the hearth here. A generational apostle, but he had to respond to being left alone. Elijah is another example among several others that we can talk about from the pages of scripture. He was left alone to encounter God in 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 9 to 14. A still small voice came to him to give him next direction for his life. Again, therefore, as I close, anytime you feel abandoned, it is for God to pick you up. Anytime you feel locked up in a corner, it is for God to announce you again in the public. Anytime you feel cast down. Everywhere you turn, nobody is out there to listen to you and to help you. It's because God wants you to hear his voice about the plan he has in store for you. You may be in this situation or you may come across this situation someday. Take this encouragement that your being separated is to prepare you for higher flight as an ego. And that's the testimony I'm waiting for from you. I know very shortly you'll have it so. God bless you. As you move forward in your endeavors, business, career, ministry, or other areas of life. Looking forward to hearing your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.